Our next session will be hosted by Josh Shifter, who is a senior manager for software development here at Bentley. In this session, Josh is going to be demonstrating a variety of ways that you can enhance your front end applications to improve viewing and interaction with your digital twin. So over to you, Josh. Okay, I think I can hide that thing. And uh, welcome everybody to, uh, to my session on where we're going to be learning about some key features uh, for iModelJS interactive apps. These are so that you can create your own uh, compelling user experiences uh, for your users. Um, I'm really excited to be showing this, or you know, that the, the context of this presentation is the uh, this program called the iModel Sample Showcase. Uh, this has been a project of mine uh, for a while now, and it, it's it's finally ready for everybody to use. So, uh, in a moment, I'll show you how to get to it. But first, I want to just answer the question. A moment ago, I said uh, compelling user experience. Well, you know, what is what is a compelling user experience? And this is an example. This is a uh, this is called the, the heat map sample. This is a, there's an eye model here with a, with a uh, geolocated map. And you can, you know, I'm, I'm visualizing some points in, in a heat map kind of scenario. It's very smooth and, and interactive. Th these points are random. They're not, you know, this is not real, but you could imagine it coming in and, and believe it or not, or maybe it's easy to believe, I don't know. This is actually the first, um, iModelJS program that I personally wrote, uh, the um, this heat map visualization, and uh, yeah. Anyway, it, it it's in our samples, and the source code is available to you. Should you like to do something similar? Okay. Uh, with that, I'm going to do a quick overview of. Uh, so where do you start? Forgot that part. Where do you start? With everything iModelJS, you start on iModelJS.org. Close out that one. Ooh, what happened? Give my web browser a moment to wake up. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So imiljs.org is your place to start. Uh, samples is here available for you. You click it, and that will open up the showcase that I was just showing you. Showcase has a bunch of features to it. Uh, the source code for a particular sample shows up on the left. I'm going to close that out for now just so we can focus on the samples, but we'll we'll be back to that. Um, on the right is the sample gallery where we show you uh, all the samples that are currently available. Of course, this is a, is a web app that's being constantly refreshed check back I think we, we we expect to add these at a pretty a pretty decent clip add new samples but there's a there's a bunch here I think there's about 40 or so that are ready to go right now okay uh, first sample you start out with is the simplest sample of all it's the uh, it's the just the straight up 3d viewer without anything exciting it's sort of similar to that basic viewport app that um, that Rube showed a moment ago this eye model is our metro station sample eye model um, again, this uh, this data is this this particular I model is available to you through our getting started uh, portal. You can uh, download it. You know you can you can make a copy of it. You can uh, use it in any way you like. Okay, so I just want to quickly show that this 3D sample here has the ability to open multiple I models. It's it's not uh, tied to one. So we. We have a few here currently, more to come, of course. Um, we got buildings, plants, a simple house, and that and that metro station I showed you a moment ago. Here's everybody's favorite tiny little plant model that we that we like to use. Okay, uh, so that's basic 3D viewing. Next is 2D viewing. You know, a lot of times I models, people think uh, we show a lot of 3D stuff, but there's 2D models get synchronized over just like the 3D. Um, this house model has a bunch of uh, different uh, 2D drawings in it. It's got floor plans, it's got interior sections, and it's got exterior elevations. It also has sheets. So here's a sheet showing some sections. Um, 
whatever's in your data would show up here. And of course, the uh, we only have two uh, I models that show up here because uh, those other ones just don't happen to have any 2D data in them. This is the this is that metro station a sheet showing a section of the metro station. And one thing you can see here that maybe wasn't obvious in the in the 3D view is that there's a lot of stuff going on underground. You can see the train tunnels, some trains in there. Um, we'll get another view of that in a second. Okay. Next sample is a view attribute sample. And again, the point of these things is not to demonstrate to you um, that we can do this. I mean, I think everybody knows that we can do it. It's, it's that you can do it and the source code here is all available and it's not cooperating. You would not be surprised to hear that I tested this five minutes before. wonder if my internet connection is having a problem. Oh, here we go. Okay. So uh, here's the view attribute sample. This lets you control things like the render mode. Um, for example, I, we've been showing you smooth shaded mostly, which uh, I think it's, I think it's, a, I think my internet quit for a moment and it's, it's re-downloading a bunch of things. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So there's that smooth shaded view, but again, we had that, uh, there's different versions here. A smooth fill is kind of neat looking and a uh, wireframe. Um, yeah, let's look at, let's look at the smooth. Um, you can, we, one of the, one of the view attributes is the control of the background map. We can turn it off so we can, we can look at, we can start looking inside, look underneath, see what's going on there. It's still kind of hard to get into this one. You need, you need a section. That's a teaser for later. Um, my favorite feature, uh, the visual impact is the uh, map transparency. I can change the transparency of the map so that we can look down underneath and get a good view of, uh, of what's going on underground. Okay, so those are the, um, those are kind of the intro samples. They don't, they're just, just kind of the most basic starters for viewing 2D and 3D and and changing what you're looking at, and changing how it views. Um, now, the, now the next group of samples is, you know, kind of what I call, you know, these are the real full-blown features. The, um, how did we come up with this list? Um, basically, we've been doing, Rupa and I have been doing onboarding events for uh, development teams for, yeah, I think he said about two years. That sounds about right. And these are the. Um, the, the ideas for these samples came from the the top requested the most common needed features and you know we didn't want to have to reinvent it every time somebody asked us about it um, so that's why we created these this one is about um, you know if you want to emphasize particular elements so let's say I just pick uh, I'll just pick a couple of these windows you can uh, I can do so I can emphasize them this makes them, uh, you know, they stand out nicely so you can find them. I can, maybe I want to like super emphasize this one for some reason. I can make it, I can change its color. And again, you don't have to do this interactively the way I'm doing it. You can do this by programmatic logic. I think, you know, that's the, that's the point of this, not to put buttons to do it. Although, you know, that is valid also. You can, you know, I can hide things. I can... You know, I can revert these, I can bring them back, I can bring back the, uh, you know, remove the color, uh, remove the emphasis, and I can, oh, look, I, I left a little hole in the drawing, in, in the model, let's, uh, let's bring back that window. So that's, uh, that's emphasize elements. Um, I talked about heat map already, or I showed you heat map. I want to say that, you know, heat map was, again, it was one of these onboarding events that we did. It was a team that was looking to visualize an electrical grid for a small city. And they wanted to be able to um, highlight, they, they were creating sort of an executive dashboard for highlighting data integrity issues within their electrical grid. And so they wanted to be able to do something like, you know, po point out like where the problems were and give them some, uh, you know, emphasis for the, the, the more critical issues are were red and the smaller ones, you know, the less critical ones 
were green. And so that's why we created this, uh, this sample. Marker pins is next. I'm not gonna go through every one of these. So if you're, if you're, get, if you're feeling this is tedious, uh, I'm almost done with the, with the list. Um, wow, my internet is not doing great today. Um, marker pins, are we gonna get marker pins? Here they are, okay. Uh, marker pins are another kind of visualization for a set of points. It has this, this sample has the same kind of control where you can, uh, you know, just randomly create marker pins. We also have a kind of silly stuff like, uh, you know, putting them in a circle. Again, this is just to emphasize that, you know, in a real scenario, these markers would be created by pulling data from some, some data source. And, and I want to point out, you know, that's a key feature of digital twins is that, you know, we're not necessarily pulling data from the eye models, although you can do that to locate, you know, a very important thing happened here on this street. But um, it's not necessarily coming from the eye model. It can be coming from any data source available to you, you know, on the internet. So uh, maybe a traffic, uh, uh, you know, traffic monitoring system that's live or uh, any, any kind of uh, um, so, some kind of analysis that was done in the past, and it's sitting. If, if it's available to you on the internet, you can integrate it into your application, uh, or you can have you know users can be creating these markers themselves. So here's a uh, let me just I'll just put it on the corner here, so you don't have to watch me fumble with snapping. I'll I can create a, a green one and a uh, and a blue one. Maybe the blue one's not cooperating right now. It's not. Um, what I want to show you is that. Oh well. What I want to show you next is that the um, these markers are correctly set up in three d three dimensions, but the whole thing's gone decided to go kaput on me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm going to roll it. If it happens again, I'm going to restart. So anyway, so here's these uh, the, the 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 automatically placed ones are up here in a high up plane, but the um, the ones that I snapped were snapped uh, specifically in 3D. Okay, like I said, I'm running out of. I don't want to show every single one of these, but I can't skip the shadow study because this is the one. This is the one that my kids like the best. They. they dad for this one so this one is you know the the eye model is like we were saying it's you know it's it's located physically on the world um, we know where it is we know what time of day it is uh it's uh in where i'm sitting and and where this model is in philadelphia it's it's 10 o'clock in the morning uh, and we can we can see you know what, what what does the light look like in the morning when the sun came up the shadow was over there and uh, and so on, and you can do different times of the year, different times of the day, and see what it looks like. And again, the point here is that this code is very simple and available to you. I'm going to skip a couple. I, I did tease clipping, so let's uh, let's just show clipping. For example, let, let's show it in the uh, the metro station because that's probably the now the metro station model itself is very large, and it it defaults to a it's you know. It's very, I should say, it's very long and not very tall. So it it um, defaults to this very large uh, box, but I can pull it in and we can come in here and we can, you can see what's going on inside the model. If we, I don't have a way to easily turn off the map so you can see those trains in there, but they're in there. Uh, this, this also shows off very well in the, um, in here, let's let's turn on uh, yeah, X clipping. Let's flip it so we can just click by one plane, or this is clipping by six planes at the same time. The planes don't have to be uh, you know X Y Z oriented; they just happen to be in this sample. Um, okay, so that's clipping. So let's uh, skip a few. Next up is. Uh, I'm not going to go into these in a lot of detail, but there's a uh, series of UI components here. So buttons and checkboxes, 
input fields. Th these are active things. You can interact with them. You know, all the, every loading icon you could possibly want, sliders and progress indicators, and they're available here, so you can just drop them right into your uh, your sample, into your application. Okay, uh, tabs, text, tiles, toggles, every different shape of toggle you might want, um, and and then next up is trees, and there's a. You know, trees are probably the most, in my mind anyway, maybe not for everybody, but they're the most complicated of the UI elements. There's not only are they complicated to to create, you know, to to implement, but there's so many different options of different ways that you want to uh, organize your or present your 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 hierarchical data. So um, here's the most basic tree sample. This one's got some hard coded um, nodes in it. Here's uh, here's one that's actually pulled data from an I model. This is this data came out of the Metro Station I model. You can see the uh, you know the the plaza. I mean, there's obviously there's a lot of data in this I model. There's many many elements. The roof. I mean, the plaza is the easiest one, and this goes down to the individual elements, right? Um, that's that one. Uh, this one's showing a combination of those. The the in-memory tree, the, the hard-coded ones, together with the ones pulled out of the I model. This is a whole very different looking presentation where with, with the tree and with columns, custom, uh, customizing the what an icon might look like. And last up is uh, this one that shows a, a combination. I can, and it, it, it highlights a concept we call unified selection where I can select things in the tree, and then the corresponding elements are selected uh, in the view. So, you know, here's the uh, a selection of the elements in the uh, for the roof or for the rail. Of course, it's underground. Uh, I meant to click the plaza, which is uh, which is down in here. And then again, it goes to individual elements, and it does work in both directions. Um, so you can you can select elements down here and they're they're highlighted up in the tree. Okay, so that's um that's kind of a that's my that's my kind of guided tour through all the samples that exist. I'm going to jump all the way back up to the top and start showing you how to use the code here. So we'll open up. Let's jump to uh, that 3D one. This is the purpose of these samples um, is to uh, is to understand how you can you can duplicate them yourself. So here is uh, the simplest one, just to get us started, get us oriented. There's two source files. There's the the app source file and the UI source file. The app is this this app is trivial. Basically, it just has one setup method that's basically telling the the showcase framework. You know, the the overall app. It's saying you know this is the UI I want you to show in this box. Okay, so what's the definition of this UI? It's called viewport only UI. It's over here in a file called viewport only UI. It's a it's a pretty simple React component that combines together. You know, it's a kind of a composite component that combines together a few things. If you're not familiar with React, um, it's a really flexible uh, HTML UI framework. Um, that can be used to create, you know, very interactive applications. Uh, all these features you saw here, they're all React uh, user interface on top of an HTML canvas. So here is uh, a component that we wrote to host the viewport. It's not the standard viewport. It's a little, it's a little different for the uh, purposes of the showcase here. It is, it's got this reloadable feature where Basically, I can give it the name of an I model, and it'll refresh. So, if if when somebody changes what I model there to look at, this component refreshes and shows you that other I model in the view. What else does this have? It has this little box, this div, which is this box down here at the bottom right, which basically has the instructions. You know, use the toolbar at the top right. There's the instructions. And it has that selector, so we can change I models. The list of I models is 
uh, baked into the showcase. And uh, it actually can be customized for each sample, but anyway, that's not so important for, um, you know, when you're choosing an iModel in your application, you're gonna use one of the mechanisms that Roop showed earlier. Either the user selects the iModel or the identity of the iModel is configured into the app, either one. Um, anyway, so that's, um, that's the simplest uh, 2D, um, similar kind of thing. The app, you know, I wanna show this one because it shows an app that's a little, the app section is a little more interesting. There's, you know, there's that setup again, but there's two kind of more, and now we have two actual methods in here. We have get 2D models. This makes a list. This queries the I model here, and then it loops over the models that it got back. And it basically says, okay, push the sheets into one list, push the drawings into another list and return them back. And of course the UI is gonna use that to populate this list here that has the drawings in, at the top and the bottom. That's the, and then change viewport view. That's, that's the control, sorry, that's the application that tells this viewport control that, that underlying it has that, that HTML canvas. You're telling the viewport control, I wanna look at a different model. Now remember when I say model, I mean draw sheets, which is distinct from iModel, which is a, a larger container that can have many models within it. So what does this thing do? It basically calls view creator and it says, make me a view. And then it tells the viewport to change your view. Viewport change view, that's a basic, um, you know, built in uh, function that's inside the, um, the iModel JS packages that you download uh, that are available. Uh, get view for a model right now, it's, li it's living in this, in this file over here. Now, at some point we think this is gonna move into iModel.js proper, but for now, I kind of like that it's in here because it, it lets me do a, a nice little demo, which is to just show you that, um, that this, this, um, this code is not just static for you to read, but you can also edit it uh, live in here. So what are we doing here? We're, we're get, there's that get view for model we just saw a moment ago. It's saying, I wanna create the view state. Here's that create view state. Um, there's some commonality to this stuff in this, uh, create view state props, which is down here, where we set up all kinds of stuff like um, the aspect ratio of the view, the, the um, you know, the which models are being displayed. Of course, it's, it's one model, it's this drawing model, um, which categories, um, where, you know, the, the camera, uh, the camera data, like the origin and the angle, the focal length and all, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, there's a whole lot of features that go into setting up a view. Um, but one of the things is that we, we can control, we can independently control the uh, the background color for drawings and sheets. And, you know, maybe I don't like the uh, the white background. I can, I can change it to blue, click the run button. Now I get a nice blue background. And just to show you that I'm not fooling around, I can, I can call any API that's in iModel.js. There's a from string method on this color depth class from string. I happen to know that it has one of my favorite colors, which is a cornflower blue. Hopefully I spelled that correctly. Now when I hit um, play, we'll rerun the app with that edited code. And now we get the nice blue background color. Um, this is, you know, obviously this is, this is pretty common nowadays for uh, web development experience to have this uh, this thing we call a code playground. I think it's it's really exciting that we have this for iModel JS because you can do all kinds of uh, experiments in here and uh, you know try things out really quick and then cut and paste and put the code into your into your app. Okay, um, I think that probably pretty much covers. What I wanted to show for um, in here. Oh, sorry. I, I so I tried to change the to a different sample, and it's it's warning me. It's saying, uh, you know, you made changes in here. You're going to lose them. Yeah, I, I don't need I don't need to save that change. Um, 
This is an example of a more sophisticated app, uh, more sophisticated sample. There's a lot more code in here, but let's say, let's say I, I, I um, let's say I want to move some code into my application. So that's the next kind of uh, thing that you'll want to do. So I have here a um, a sample application. Uh, I call it the, it's the Jumpstart demo. That's a very original name. I have it running over here. What it is is it's a it's a copy of the desktop starter. You see it over here. It's running that that roadway um, I model that that Roop showed you earlier. Um, but you notice something weird over here. It's got um, there's kind of gaps in the road where we can't we can't see it, and kind of the, the I model looks kind of strange that way. And the reason is because the you know it's a new roadway that hasn't been constructed yet. So the terrain that it's it interacts with the terrain in a way that you know there's going to be there's going to be a construction project when this is built to remove you know to to, to remove some of the earth uh, to build up some of the earth you see this green section also there are there are tunnels here that are where the roadway goes straight under this ridge here and uh it's easier to see when i rotate where the ridges are you know so the road goes straight underneath so anyway remember i showed you that feature a, a little while back um, where we could look underground. So, well, I want to add that feature to my app. So I, 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 I got a little head start on it. I added, this is not exactly the desktop starter. I added this button here, um, which has a slider to control the transparency, but it doesn't do anything yet. And we want to make it do something. So maybe I'll just show you the, uh, it does one thing. It prints out numbers into the, into the console here. So as I change the um, as I change the, the value, it, it changes down here. So how does it do that? Well, you know, first of all, there's a, it has, you know, again, it has the same sort of thing, React components, you can mix and match them together. This little panel, it's right here. It's this, uh, this div box with a hard coded size and a label that says transparency and a slider. How did I know how to make the slider? Well, you know, it's not going to surprise you. I used my favorite tool, the showcase, came down here, found sliders. I, uh, I picked the one with the tick marks here. That was the one I wanted. I came down here, I saw a slider with tick marks, and I cut and pasted this line of code. Dropped it into my app here. I had to customize it a little bit. Um, for example, uh, that slider goes from zero to 100, but mine's gonna go from zero to one. I gave it a default value of, of 0.5, a step of one one hundredth, and I told it I want 10 tick marks. I had to implement a function to handle updates. The function right now, all it does is log to the console, which we saw. Okay, so now I wanted to control the transparency. What do I do? I go back to the samples, of course. I know it's. I know that um, changing that as a view attribute, it's this map transparency. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to. I'm going to just hit Control F and look for transparency in here. And I'm going to find the function. Oops, spelled it wrong. There we go. I'm going to find the functions that um, control transparency. So there's a get background, set background, right? So I'm going to grab those. I'm going to put them into my app. Okay. Um, right now, these are static methods. I, I don't. I don't want them to be static methods. I want to be able to call them from my. Now I got. A, I got an underline. I got an underline here. It's telling me there's a. It can't find viewport. It's offering to do a quick fix. I'm going to say yeah. I want. I need to import that from the the front end package. Automatically adds uh, an import statement. Now, if this looks similar, if if you're familiar with Visual Studio Code. And this looks uh, familiar to you. It is Visual Studio Code. That's that's a really cool thing, you know. Visual Studio Code was written in React, so we can use packages from Microsoft, who develops Visual Studio Code, and mash them together into our iModel.js app. Remember, this 
well, I'm sorry, I was showing you that in Visual Studio Code, but you can do the same, <laughs> but you can do the same thing in Ample. I'm, we came together, as you see, we mashed together the same viewport here. It has all the same features. Um, it does the same things as you're editing. But let's come back to let's come back to the change we were trying to make. So we have those two methods. We need to call them. We're going to call them just to simplify things. We're going to call them right in our render mode. And what do we need? We need we need a viewport. Well, so here I'm going to create a, a a variable viewport, and I'm going to give you a little secret that I know that you will learn quickly. There's a there's a class called iModel app, which has a lot of static methods in it. I will call a method call on the, the view manager, and I will ask it for the selected view. Now, this, this application has only one view, so this is pretty easy, but in general, you know, applications can have multiple views, so you want to do this, and then I don't know that, I mean, I happen to know that that view is, uh, is going to be there, but uh, if the application was in the process of being started up, or if it was using a different stage that didn't have views, it might not have one. So I have to make uh, make TypeScript happy and tell it, yeah, if, if there is no viewport, let's not let's just not do anything. Okay. What's the next thing we need? Well, we need that transparency. So let's make uh, a variable for the transparency. What is that going to be equal to? This dot. Well, it's that method we just created, right? Get get there. It is get background transparency. Of course. It needs that viewport that we just got. Okay, and well, same thing with the um, the transparency. If there's no map, then the viewport won't have a transparency. So we're just going to say, um, if there's no transparency, let's just return it. We probably would do something different. We probably want to show maybe a, a notification here to the user saying, you know, you got to turn on the, the map first. But uh, we're going to save time during the, the live thing here. Okay, so now we know what the back, we know the current transparency. And what we're going to do then is we're going to put that here. So, start this right now. If I run this right now, I'm just going to save my code. Okay, so, what happens? It compiles, the starter app reruns. You know, I don't have to wait. For, I don't have to wait. I mean, that, that to me, that's a great experience. I click here, and what happens? The transparency is, uh, 0.5, but we know that it's not really 0.5, but that's because, see, it's hard-coded here. So we're going to change this one. We're going to say, let's just initialize to, to this local variable, this transparency that we just got. I'm going to save my code. App reruns, reopens the I model, and now I'm going to say, I'm going to do this again. Ah, perfect. The, the control defaulted to no transparency. But of course, you know, it's still not doing anything. Okay, next. On update, what do we want to do? We want to change the transparency. So we're going to call that set method that we that we took from this from the uh, sample. Set transparency, what do we need? We need a viewport and we need a transparency. Now, remember, Josh, you don't I keep doing this when I'm practicing. Trans, that's not the transparency. That's just the value that's showing up in the slider. The value, the transparency is the set method. It comes from the set method. Set it to on the viewport with the value. What value? The value coming from the control. So that's values. Now you might ask, wait, why are there two values? Or why, why, why can there be multiple values? And the reason why there can be multiple values is because let me just get my parentheses in the right place while I, eh, I blew it. Good. Got to, let's see if this thing can help me out. Type void is not assignable to parameter of type number. I do wrong. It's a number. Anybody who's paying attention and sees what I did wrong, let me know. This is what happens when you code live, everyone. Let me try that again and see if I can get it right this time. So 
transparency in the viewport. And the value is going to be one of the fast end values here. Somebody sees something different that I just did. I don't see it. Anyway, there's the value. I'm going to save it. Oh, I forgot to answer. Why, why, are, why is it an array? The reason why it's an array is because there are sliders that support multiple values like this one here. So this slider would have two values. Ours only has one, so we always use the first one. Okay, I saved, reloaded, and now finally I should have the ability to control my transparency. So to summarize, <laughs> to summarize the, um, the showcase is available to you. Go ahead and run it. It is on imodeljs.org. You can get to it here from samples. And, you know, please ask questions and please let us know um, what more samples you would like. I mean, you wouldn't be surprised to know that I have a list. I can think of them faster than I can create them, or even then I assume we can create them. But um, if, there's a, if there's a sample you think would be helpful, please let us know, or, um, you know, like everything uh, that we're doing these days, this, this itself, the showcase itself is open source. Here is the source code for the showcase. Um, under source uh, front end samples, you'll see that list, that's the list, including, uh, you know, all those tree ones, they're under here. And, uh, We'd love to have uh, submissions. If somebody, uh, if you have an idea for a sample that you think would be useful to the community, um, you can create a pull request on this repository. We'll take a look at it. Uh, we'll talk to you a little bit about it and uh, we can bring it right in and uh, make it available to everybody. And uh, <clears throat> okay then. So that's pretty much what I had, Jason. Um, maybe we can answer some questions.